there. All right. It's the man to man podcast podcast where we get together and we just have normal conversations that, that guys can have, right. And demonstrate, uh, what it's like for, for two guys to be able to get together and, and just talk, talk about stuff that happened in life. And so Mike Mikowski, okay. Dennis Lemire, we're, uh, we're in the forties with our episodes now, which I think is kind of crazy. Actually, Come on. We're, Come on. we're almost to 50. Uh, pretty neat, actually, that we've <laughs> been going almost to as many adults as I am. We're getting there. <laughs> you know, we're, we're at me now. We're catching up to you. So it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting run for the last. It's been over a year that we've been doing this, so it's pretty cool. Um, wow. We just got back. We were out in Colorado. We were out in Bona Vista. Well, I always want to say Buena Vista, but it's not. Somebody corrected me from Colorado and said, "No, it's Bona Vista." I'm like, oh, okay, really. I yeah, thought it was yeah. Yeah. right. I mean, it's English. That's what it looks like. It should be. I mean, spell your stuff right. If you don't want us to say it wrong is what I say. Well, a, there is a difference. There is a difference between English and Colorado when. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I said it and somebody went, that's not how you say that. And I said, well, what, how else would you say it? So, uh, yeah, uh, I was corrected. But anyways, um, it was fun. I mean, we just, so we just got back. We got back on, on Sunday. Uh, today is, is Friday just for everyone, you know, for a little orientation. And so this is fresh. And I think that, you know, that both of us wanted to get together and, and just kind of give our, um, feedback on, on what the heck we just went to, because it was, I think it was pretty amazing, at least from, you know, if I was going to try to put a word to it, which is silly, cause we're about to put, you know, half an hour to it, but, um, but I think it was great. And so both of us wanted to get together and, and have a little conversation and talk about, uh, you know, what, what it is that we were at. So, um, that's what we're going to do. Right. Yeah. And yeah, for, from just to right off the bat, from my point of view is it was probably the most powerful event I've ever attended in my life. Uh, I agree. and yeah. that's just, just honest God truth. I've been to a lot of, I've been to many different seminars, many different weekend events and stuff like this, but what God does through other men for other men yeah. at this event is it's it's incredible so i'm excited mm -hmm. to share some thoughts of you know what what i saw what what god did uh yeah it, it's it's amazing yeah so so what it was what the event we were at was called muster m-u-s-t-e-r and uh it was put on by a group that's called or a, a ministry that's called wild sons so their website is yeah. wildsons.com uh, right off of their website, I'm going to read a couple of things, but it's basically Wild Sons is a community of men living from a full heart, pursuing a life of passion, adventure, and freedom, walking intimately with God on a journey to become the men that they were created to be. I mean, honestly, having met these guys, I don't know that it gets much more of an accurate description of that or than that. It, 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 it's literally just a group of guys walking the things out that, that you and I have talked about for the last year here on this podcast together. And that's really what we saw when we were out there. Oh yeah. There's once again, it's like John Eldridge always says, you know, he always says that this isn't a stick. It's not, you know, it's not this thing that we just, we just do. And then we walk away from it. It's actual, you can tell in these guys' life, and that's one of the things that I will just share is that you can tell in these guys' life that it's a lifestyle because of the the situations that they're sharing are today. Right. It's what they're going through. They're real. They're vulnerable. It's, I mean, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about the, you know, the mother wound event and, 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 you know, and then when it came to marriages, you know, and how, I mean, realistically, he's, it's, it's not a bunch of words that he just repeats over and over again. It's, it's a constant renewing and becoming of the heart. Um, and it's, it's so refreshing to see that, mm -hmm. to hear that. So. Yeah, it was, it was a great example of what, uh, you know, walking this out in real life looks like effectively and, and what it looks like over the course of, you know, the, the 10, 15, 20 years that these guys have been doing this together. Um, it really was a, I mean, it was an eye-opening experience. Again, we've done, you know, we've done, we've done a ton of retreats ourselves. We've gone to a ton of retreats from other people, um, and they're all good. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not saying like this is yeah. the grandmother of all retreats, right? It was just something different about this one. That was, um, to me, it was, 
it was it was just very it was very heartwarming and and it was um it was super interesting to me just to see the dynamic of this one and and, and again all of them seem to have their own dynamic this one was was really was really neat and really interesting okay. to to watch how these guys kind of just all worked together right what's so what's so cool Danny is you know, you got you got John Eldridge, who's been in this in this message for twenty plus years. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you got you know you got Morgan, who is a disciple of John, who got, you know does the becoming a king, which we'll be putting on here this year. Um, and then now you have Pablo, and and so he's putting on these muster events. And what's so interesting about him is they all have the basic foundational truth of us as men, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the that's why you got to go to all three <laughs> because, you know, you you could get, you, you know, me and you have gone back and led hosted basis, basics and led them. And every time we go back, we get changed again by the right. same, you know, by, you know what I mean? And then every mm -hmm. time you're done becoming a king, you know, you can go to them five, six times um, and still receive what God has for you in, in that thing. And so this, this is just another addition to the stepping process of, of, Becoming a man after God's own heart, becoming a man that actually is in union with Christ consistently throughout your day, um, and it's just I, I I love all three, and sure. so you know I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure something's going to come up in two years. I'm going to say it's the most powerful event I've ever been to. You know, <laughs> right, right. So uh, it's I mean in but, the end it's coming at it from a different angle. So I think it touches on where we are in life too at times. You know, I mean it, there's times when when obviously you know, God, God moves in a way that is very specific to where you're at. And so I right. think at different places that we were, you know, these different events would probably hit, or I know they do, they hit differently in our life. Right. But this right. one, like I said, is the most recent. So I'm going to read the vision of it. And then I'm going to read their description of what muster is off their website real quick. Again, wildsons.com, but it'll give you some background as to uh, what it is that we did this. Right. So their vision is at some point in our lives, Either through disrupting circumstances or in response to the deep cry of our hearts for more, most of us come to realize that our daily lives are far away from the true desires we have deep in our hearts and from the promise that Jesus offers from the depth of his own, depths of his own heart. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, John 10.10. 10. At this crucial point in his love, God offers us the possibility to stop and ask ourselves, what kind of man am I becoming? What kind of life am I experiencing and what kind of legacy am I leaving to those I love? What if there yeah. is more? What if we could receive that kind of life that Jesus talked about? What if we could experience a life of passion, adventure, and freedom and become the man God created us to be? What if we could leave a legacy to love, of love to those we care for that lasts for eternity? The wild sons muster. There's a path that has been followed by few, generation after generation, a path that is still out there and is available to anyone who is willing to accept God's invitation and be shaped, formed, and forged by God into the man that he was created to be. The Wild Sons Muster is an invitation to find and follow this path in the company of brothers and allies and with the wisdom who, of those who have gone before us, so that together we may become who we really are, his wild sons. Imagine spending four days in the mountains of Colorado in the company of exceptional men with your same passions and desires, with similar battles and challenges, with the same love for Jesus, men who are hungry and thirsty for true life, for them and for the people they have influence over, men who are willing to step into the battlefield and in union with God fight for their own hearts and for the hearts of those they love. Imagine having the opportunity to retreat 50 yards from the front line to encounter God and be restored in him, to listen to his voice and receive his counsel, to discover and embrace more of your true identity in him. The wild son's muster is an invitation to receive clarity and interpretation, to recover your strength and joy. It is an invitation to fully recover your masculine heart. Yeah. We'll have insight sessions. We'll have insightful sessions that lead us into deep waters, space for personal reflection, time alone with God, adventure, and space for joy. All this in the company of exceptional men just like you. Yeah. So, I mean, a, a great little summary of what it is. I think the, you know, the the part in there that is that it, that kind of jumps out at me the most, right? Is is this idea of or is, is the, the the paragraph where it says, uh, you know, imagine spending four days in the mountains of Colorado 
in the company of exceptional men with your same passions and desires, with similar battles and challenges, with the same love for Jesus, men who are hungry and thirsty for true life, for them yeah. and for the people they have influence over. Like that, those few sentences, I think it it, it really it explains exactly what I saw when I was there. It was, it was, it was really a company of guys who really were searching for more. Some of them, frankly, had no idea why or what they were searching for. Like exactly. there were guys that showed up who um, probably got a little bit more than they expected. And uh, I don't know if you want to go a little deeper into that road, obviously without names or anything like that, we're going to try to keep everybody you know, as, as safe as we can in terms of identity, but. Well, I think, I think when it says exceptional men, you know, that's, um, that term isn't trying to say that, you know, these are all guys that have already become something and they're great. That's not what they're trying to say. What they're trying to say is just men that are searching for more. And you're right. Some showed up and they had no idea what that more was. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was four, there was four salvations. So they gave themselves to Christ on that weekend. Right. So we're right. not even not even talking about, you know, we're not even just talking about Christian men. We're talking about men from all over the spectrum from ages 18 to ages 60, 70, 80 years old. And right. Right. when you get when you get in a group like that and you realize that you're not going to be talking about your chimney sweep or your your job, your whole the whole point of it is getting to know men's story, listening to listening to the Lord about not only what God wants to do in your heart, but what's what I thought was amazing was how many men, including myself and you, got something in our heart to share with a guy that we may know, maybe didn't even know. And then when we shared it, it it triggered something in that man's heart and something that they needed to hear. I mean, I just, I mean, maybe maybe you can share the story about with Joe. You know, I mean, just mm -hmm. did that happen to you? You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I was saying Joe. Because you know Joe Godfrey, so you yeah. Know, but. Nope, Joe's cool. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, so it was. It was Saturday. It was Saturday morning. So going into this, you know, again, we've been to we've been to a few of these retreats. We've been to other retreats and things. And so, I, I, you know, I, I, I sort of take the time beforehand just to, just to ask God, you know, what. Not not an expectation because I, I I found that that if I have an expectation going in, it's it's usually not um, usually doesn't end up there. And I don't want that, frankly. I want to just leave it open, right? So I want the door to be open for whatever God wants to do. He's going to do, and so it wasn't well, for expectation. Can, if, I can nope, go ahead. if I can interject, them, Danny, that's what I, that's the thing that I think you and I have both been, you know, this whole following an agenda and. You know, and having having everything that's going to be taught, written down, all that kind of stuff. That's one of the things that you and I both enjoy about these. You walk in and you really don't have a clue on what's going to happen. And I think there's something right about that because they leave it open for Jesus right, to do what right. he wants to do instead of developing in a curriculum or, or whatever uh, and because we want to do. And I, I think there's something so cool about that because you can't really go into it with an expectation. And that's good in a lot of ways because then you can't be disappointed. Right. You can't necessarily be, you know, thankful. It's just like, okay, whatever God's going to do is going to do. So I'm sorry I had to throw that in no, there. No, that's, that's good. It's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And it's something that I think we have developed yeah. uh, a little bit more of a appreciation for, I guess I'll say. I mean, I'm a very much, you know, hey, we've got to have things in order. Everybody needs to know where they're going, when they're going there, blah, 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 kind of guy normally. But I think that these yeah. these experiences that that we've been having at, at the, at these events. And frankly, even just at other things in life have led me to, you know, to really appreciate that idea of, I don't need to know, you know, I don't, it yeah. was great for me. So, so it's a couple of things before I go back to the story, it's a technology free event, right? So they literally make you give them your cell phone when you check in, yep. they're like, okay, hey, here, sign this waiver, put your cell phone in the box, right? I mean, it's like, you you don't have a choice. You just do it. And, and we all know it going into it. It's not a surprise, um, but it is kind of shocking every time you do it. And in little things like I, I don't have a watch then because my phone is, is my watch, you know? And so, so I don't, I have no idea at all during this whole weekend, what time it is until somebody tells me. And <laughs> 
that would be hard for me. That would have been hard for me in the past, but right. I've really realized how much of a gift that is now where it is, you know, just to be told it's lunchtime. I don't need to know what time it is. I just need to know that I need to go get lunch. And so it doesn't matter what time it is, frankly, because the next thing I'm doing is going to be told and then I'm going to go do that. And so the yep. actual time doesn't matter, but yet I still find myself going, I wonder what time it is. Why? Right. I mean, who cares? It really doesn't right. matter at all. Right. Right. And you know what I've, what I've installed, like we said before, um, what happens in the weekend, the same guy that is at that weekend is at your house. And so what I, right. you know, so what I've, what I've done is because of this, when I start to get a little bit discombobulated, or a little bit, you know, it used to be going to the phone, look at Facebook. Now I put the phone in my bedroom and I walk away from it. Right. For a good yeah. 15, 20 minutes where I used to just to get my mind off of things. I'd go on there and scroll up. Now it's the opposite because I know how important it is on the weekends mm -hmm. when you don't have it. There's so right. much freedom that occurs just without your phone, you know. Mm -hmm. And so once again, that's putting it to practice in my daily life. Now when I'm, you know, feeling weird or feeling a little bit down or whatever the case may be, that baby goes away. And I don't look at that for however long it is. So I can get whatever I need to get to get my mind right again, you know? So, yeah, for sure. It's, it's interesting. Just those little things, even, and, you know, and the talking about it out, maybe something that I wouldn't have even thought of, but, but it's definitely a, it's a, it's a skill set that we're developing without knowing that we're developing. So, so that's it. So going into the weekend, like I said, I was praying and just saying, God, you know, what, what, where, what posture do you want my heart in? Right. I mean, I go into a lot of these retreats because we put them on in the, in the posture of, you know, what can I do for other guys that are there? You know, what do, what do you have for me to do where I can, I can help other guys or, you know, or, or help you in, you know, in the things that you're, you've got going on or, you know, I'm, a, I'm support for most of these weekends and, and that's what I'm there for. And so I go into it with that, but this one I wasn't. And so, you know, I really was praying like, God, wh you know, wh what, where do you want me? How do you want me to be um, this weekend? And I, and I really got this feeling of just hang back, right? Just hang back, relax. Don't, you don't have to be doing all of the activities or, you know, meeting every single person there or worrying about being involved in things that are happening. Just relax and take a step back and just wait for wait for, you know i mean the, the the feeling that i had was you know i i wait for me to give you direction and so i did and right. so i went into the weekend with that and so thursday night you know we have the first part and friday you have the whole day and and i really was just sort of taking this posture of just hanging back but i wasn't like i wasn't feeling like god was speaking to me at all like there was no further direction and so I thought, man, we're halfway through this thing. Saturday morning, we're in we're in the morning session, and I'm thinking we're halfway through this thing. Like I don't want to miss this, right? I even was the feeling like I I don't want to take notes. And usually I take pages of notes at these things. I mean, I have books that you know the little note taking guides that they give us that are just full, and and I like it because I like to be able to go back. Yeah, exactly. But I just felt like God saying no, just just take this in. And so I was, I'm taking it all in, I'm not taking notes. I'm trying to, I'm paying attention to every word that's being said. So I'm not distracted even by writing. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, and I was getting so much out of it, but I wasn't hearing. I wasn't again, while I say I was going in without ex expectation, I was still had some of that expectation where I was like, God show up, you know, like, what, what do you have for right. me? What do you have to say to me? And so Saturday morning, you know, we started worship and we're going through worship and the first two songs were great. And, and, and I was, I was, you know, I was, I was loving the worship and I was into it, but the, uh, you know, the, the, the third song comes on and it's one that we've done before. I, I love the song. I know what's coming. So as soon as the music starts, I, I know what's coming with this song. I know the emotion that it brings up inside of me. I know the words. I know, I know everything. And I just thought to myself, like the thought came out of my head, you know, eyes closed. My head was down. The thought jumped into my head. God, do you even know I'm here? Like, do you even see me? I've been doing everything you told me to do. And I don't even know if you know I'm here. 
And as soon as the, like, the thought came out of my head, I felt an arm on both shoulders. And Joe, uh, one of our buddies, he says, hey, God wants you to, and I swear to you, you could ask Joe, these are the exact words that he said, because we had a good laugh at it at lunch later. He says, God wants you to know that he sees you, he knows you're here, and he's and he's so glad that he could be here for his son. And I was just like, the heck just <laughs> happened? Like the words <laughs> just came out of my, my mind. God, do you even know I'm here? And then Joe says, God wants you to know he knows you're here. I'm like, is that a, like, that's a direct answer to, to a question to God right there. I don't know that I could tell you many, at least other times in my life where it's been that immediate. I mean, immediately it was like, yeah, I right. said the question, boom, Joe was standing right there to answer it. And I was like, what yeah. just happened? And it was crazy. And so <laughs> later I went up to you know, Joe and I got together at lunch. Joe came over and he was like, what, what was going? Cause I was a mess after that. And so he came over and he was like, you know, what, what happened? Like, what was going on? And I said, and I told him the story. I said, that was the question that came out of my mind. And he was like, that's crazy because as soon as I heard it, I thought, yeah, I'll get together with Denny and I'll tell him that. And then the thought went through my mind. No, you need to tell him this right now. And so I'm, he's trying to like, stumble through the aisle of people, you know, and figure out a way to get to me. And he said it like yeah. took him a while to, you know, move through. Cause there's a, lot, there's a bunch of guys there and we're all in rows, right. In chairs. And so it took him a while to like the perfect timing for that, even in the midst of like having to go through the crowd and everything and then get to exactly to me to then be able to speak that to me. And it was so perfectly orchestrated it was, it was crazy, but that, you know, that is the, there's, that's one, I would say even small story in yeah. dozens and dozens of, of even bigger stories of God showing up for men this weekend. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I could, you know, I, I know for a fact that, you know, me and you could probably spend two hours just on sharing the stories we know. And at the same time, trying to be confidential because of things that happen on those weekend are, you know, so, but, you know, it's interesting because one of the things similar happened to me and I shared it with you after you told me that Joe did that, if you remembered, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, when we were at the survival school, I had this, this time frame, you know, cause the great thing about what they do on these weekends is they have you ask God questions and you go and get alone with God and you, you listen and you wait for the answers. And, and uh, when we were at survival school, I had this pretty big question that I was going to God, and then all of a sudden it shut down. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, I was like not doing well at all because I'm like, God, why, why aren't you saying anything? You know, I'm at this point; it's a crucial point. I need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. Well, then this weekend, the same kind of thing was where, you know, I think it was, I think it was, uh, uh, Pablo was saying, "Ask God, you know, what's not working in your life." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he said is. Write down the things that are just not working. In fact, I think I have it right here. Uh, yeah, what's not working? What do you want to address? You know, what's not working? What do you want to address? And so I wrote down two or three things, and then we went to be alone with God. And the same thing happened as I said, okay, this is what I want to address. Okay, Jesus, what are you saying in that? And all of a sudden, he shared something with me. And I was like, oh, okay, that was pretty big. And then I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? And then all of a sudden, it was quiet again. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, what the heck, God? Why do you keep leaving me hanging? And so my thoughts to all the guys out there that are listening to this, if there's ever been a point in time when you're praying for something, you're looking for answers, and maybe you get a little bit of it, maybe you don't get anything at all, I would dare to challenge you that it's not God being quiet. What the Lord spoke to me was, that's enough for now, Mike. Hmm. In other words, what he spoke to me was enough. It was a, He knew how much, how much... I could handle at that point in time. And so I've come to realize just through this event that those times when God seems to be quiet, maybe he's just, maybe that's enough for now. Maybe, right. maybe he wants us to step and walk out on what we, what he did share with us a week ago, a month ago, whatever, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I totally believe that's the love of God. And that's the love of our father is like, you know, I'm going to share you some stuff with you, but boy, that's a deep down in your heart. That's all you can take, Mike, even though inside of every man, we want to take it all on at the same time mm -hmm. to fix it all. 
And so that's just something that one little personal thing that came out of that weekend for me was, oh, I'm not going to be worried necessarily that God's not speaking to me. What did he already say? And maybe that's just enough for now. And, um, but, you know, and that's what I, that's the other thing that I love about this event is not only whether you're, cause I actually was able to lead to be a part of a fire team mm-hmm. this time. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter how mature you supposedly are in the Lord. God always has something. A father always has something he wants to tell his sons. Mm-hmm. And they really, the atmosphere of that place is 100% listening to him. Mm-hmm. Jesus, what are you going to do? In fact, I love, I love many times how Pablo would be like, we get ready to get going and he'd be like, Jesus, right. what are you saying? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And we would all be pausing, we'd be waiting, you know. We're all just like, just that, this is going to get good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, just that acknowledging him, you know, that scripture verse I've always told you, that's one of my favorite, acknowledge him in all your ways. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, now I'm I, I'm beginning to see that it's an everyday, all day thing. It's not just when I need him. It's not when just when somebody else needs him. It's not just when we're going to do a podcast. It's literally... On the way here from Carrie's mom's house, I'm, I'm asking Jesus, Jesus, what are we, what are you going to do in this podcast? You know, and mm-hmm. listening. Right. And so, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Even there are so many little things that I feel like we could touch on from this weekend, but, but, um, you know, there's some big ones too, obviously some, some big, um, land, some big, uh, landmines or, um, uh, landmarks, but, uh, maybe landmines too, but, um, there were some, <laughs> some little, some little things that, that I thought were, were super, that stood out to me. Uh, even like the way Pablo would pray before every, so again, the guy that, the guy that, that does the like teaching or the, he's the main lead facilitator of it is Pablo. Um, and so, uh, but he, even when he would pray, he would just like Jesus. And then he would mm-hmm. stop and he would just wait. Yeah. Like he's listening. Like, what do you want me to pray? Even where, where are we going right. with this? And it was, and right. sometimes that's all it would be. They would, you'd be like, all right, let's pray Jesus. All right. So here's where we are for the day. I mean, it was just, and then he would go into, you know, the next thing that was happening. Like that was it. It was just a, just going to reconnect with you and just going to, going to just hang out there with you for a little bit. And then we're going to go. It was, it was, it was super interesting. Just these little small things that you kind of notice. And that is, you know, that's something that is, is clear of as to where he is as a person. And his relationship is with God when they're doing those things. It's not planned stuff. This isn't retreat stuff. It's literally yeah. just their relationship with God. You're seeing it in action. Right. And and that's what I love. That's the other thing I love about it. Now, I'm not against the five-step ways of having your heart healed. I mean, hello, no. my mentor is Dr. Greg Bond. Okay. So <laughs> he's the master at that. Oh, yeah. You know, but, I, but what I love about it, what I love about it is, is, we are being taught by his life experiences. Mm-hmm. It's not a notebook. It's not whatever the case may be. It's what he went through with his son two mm-hmm. weeks prior to the event. Right. It's what he went through with his wife two weeks, three weeks prior to the, the event. Um, it's like I say, there are definitely foundational truths that come out. I mean, 100% mm-hmm. there are, there's foundational truths that, that come out, but, when you're being taught by someone being vulnerable enough to share their life story in front of 70 guys, right? Your heart breaks automatically. Yeah. It's not right. like I got to search out for the presence of God. I mean, the presence of God flows through that so well. Cause why? Because it's touching every one of our hearts because we're men. Right. Right. And right. we're all after the same thing. We're all after, we want more in life and what that looks like for some is different than what it looks like for me. But when somebody is being vulnerable enough to share something that they did as a dad that wasn't very good for when they're kid, mm-hmm. and then how he walked through that, I can read 50 books and 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 not get the same experience. So once again, I'm right. not saying books are bad. I learned a lot from reading books, but it's just they set a level of vulnerability mm-hmm. and presence that allows every guy to go. I can, it's safe here. Right. I can just be myself. I can be myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was so much of that. I mean, if you just, you just wander around in conversations that guys were having, were so, were so, um, unique, but also just, uh, 
so real and and some raw, frankly. I mean, there's some raw conversations, but but super real, super open and honest. And nobody was trying to pretend to be anything that they I mean, you didn't have to. You didn't have to pretend to be anything. You could just exist in that space. And it felt yeah. it felt totally normal. It felt like this is it's okay just to exist in this space and just be who I am because that's what everyone else was doing. Exactly. And the one of the things that I've been just over the, over the, um, while or, uh, over the becoming a King and the basics and stuff that I'm realizing is I was for many years, even though I was raised in a faith based, non denominational church, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm really, I'm really beginning to see how religious I actually was. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is the fact of that. When you say Jesus, what do you want to do? He answers you. Right. Right. And what I've done in my past is the answers see sometimes so simplistic. It can't be God. I mean, he's got to come with the revelations three chapter seven, and it's got to come in. Up, you know, uh, uh, this whole revelation, you know, and no, and he could just say, go up to that guy and tell him that God loves you. Right, right. And it's that's what I'm beginning to see is he's been speaking to me my entire Christian life and probably not even before I was a Christian. Right. But I've always put his voice in a category that's got to be true to the word. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. It's got to be that. And, I'm, and I think Jesus would be up there going, would you just? back off your brain a little bit and just say what I asked you or do what I asked you to do. And so that's what I'm discovering. I mean, I'm just realizing that he wants, you know, as a father he wants to speak to his son, he's always wanting to speak to us. If we just acknowledge him and give him the time, right? you're going to, you hear him, you know, you hear right. him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's, you know, again, it's, we're expecting you know, a lot of times I think too, and, and to piggyback off of that, you're expecting, I'm asking a question. And I'm not hearing God answer. And I, and I think, well, what if he doesn't want to answer that question? That doesn't mean he's not speaking to you, right? I mean, so I, I, I think about, well, I think about my kids, right? And I might be like, hey, guys, here's the deal. We got to get picked up so that we can, you know, get out the door and get our day started. So let's pick up our stuff. Well, you know, dad, so what do you think about me playing softball this year, you know, or whatever? And it's like, I, well, we're going to get picked up. <laughs> So we can get ourselves out the door so we can get started with the day. Well, you know, dad, my car the other day was making this noise and I think I need to, you know, we're, we're going to get picked up. Like I think about, you know, just because, <laughs> just because my kids are asking me a question, it doesn't mean that I don't necessarily want to answer that question, but I may have other things that I'm trying to accomplish that they don't either. They don't know, don't care about, or, or just, you know, are just oblivious to basically because, right. because they have their own stuff. Right. So I think about that too, as many times when I, when I say to myself, you know, why isn't God speaking to me? What I really actually mean is why isn't he answering the question that I asked? Right. And right. you can get yourself in this circle of, because he's not answering the question I asked, that means that he's not speaking to me. And right. that's just, no. I, I realize, you know, after, again, after years of this now that and and like you said and this event even brought it out to me even more that it's so there's so much more to it than that that you know maybe maybe he's trying to tell me something that's a question that i've even asked yet and right and if i start listening to that then what comes next right and and where do we go from there maybe then he answers my question or maybe my, i answer my question myself because I'm following the direction that he's giving me in my life. And so I don't have that question anymore. Right. You know, right. And many times, many times he's not answering because he probably, it's probably the wrong question. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and that's where, that's, that's where I'm coming in. You know, it's more the question of Jesus. What are you doing? Not Jesus. Why aren't you answering what I'm asking for? Right. You know, right. Yep. It's more like, yeah. okay, I'm not hearing anything. What are you doing right now? What, what, what about this? What's going on? And then, like I say, be okay with maybe not hearing something, maybe hearing something. But the fact is that he acknowledges every ask. He hears every word, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I think many times we put such a precedence on what the answer that we would like to hear that we tend to overlook the answer that we already gotten. 
and claimed it to be Satan, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or again, or little things like you said, you know, I mean, if I'm not listening yeah. to the little things, then why is he, you know, I'm basically saying, God, what you're trying to say is not as important to me as the, what I want you to answer. And right. that's almost insulting. If you think about that from a person's point of view, right? If, if they ask you a question and you're going and, and it's completely off topic, you know, it's, it's like, Hey, could we try to focus a little bit here? <laughs> We're here. Right. Why are we talking about that? And, and so in some ways it really feels like it can, you know, we're again, not saying that God's upset at us for asking questions, but if we rule out the fact that he's talking because he's not answering the questions we're asking, then you're probably missing something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're probably missing something good. Yeah. In fact. Well, and, well, and an easy example is what just happened to me just a little while ago before we did the podcast. Um, uh, Carrie's mom just went through hip surgery. So we're, we're, we're trying to help her out. And, uh, and uh, Carrie took her mom to get her hair done. Of course, you know, you gotta do that when you can't walk. And, um, and so I said this, I, I was sitting there, Constance was sitting there, and I said to myself, I was, I was like, Jesus, you know, um, I give this day to you. I'm saying this in my own heart. I give this day to you. And uh, what would you like me to do next? So I'm thinking of, you know, I'm thinking of, well, we got the podcast coming up. I'm thinking of doing some writing. I'm thinking of doing that. And what I get, do the dishes. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, seriously. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and, and I went. Cause I, cause, cause obviously Carrie's been keeping, taking care of her the last couple of days and they've, they've eaten and there's been, the dishes were all over the counter. And I totally was, I totally, if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have asked Jesus, what are you doing? I think I would have probably said Constance, I'm going to go back to our house and I'm going to, cause these are all things that I wanted to do. Right. Or the things that I thought he was going to guide me into doing. And it was no, get the dishes done, be a blessing. And so I did it. Right. And that's what I mean by simplistic. Mm-hmm. Now you could sit out there and listen to this right now and go, well, are you sure that was Jesus? Maybe it was just you trying to be nice. Okay. Either way, it's good. Right. So if all right. good things come from above, God asked me to do it. I mean, just, you know. Right. Um, yeah. But that's what I'm getting to realize is I, I it's hard for me to say this, but it's almost it's I struggled in hearing from God because. I set a precedence on what God sounded like to me. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And now I've dropped that. Right. And, you know, if it's, if it's doing good for someone, your neighbor, your friend, your parents, your children, and you hear it, you ask Jesus, what are you doing in the situation? You do what you hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why not? I mean, <laughs> Right. And so that's yeah, what do you, what do that's you one of the things I think that's one of the things I think this weekend is is you this the theme of it was wanting more, that we just want more as men of God and not more as in financials and we're talking about just more of God that we mm-hmm. that we want to live a lifestyle of always wanting more. And that's something that I've been applying to my life and and it's so incredible. I'm just saying, God, I just want more of you and whatever that looks like I'm in, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had a guy ask me while we were there in, in the, in the small, in the fire team, he said, you know, I, how do you hear from God? I can't hear from God. Mm-hmm. Right. And it was like, it was like, well, and we started to talk about it. And then all of a sudden we went into the, the asking of Jesus, what do you want to say to this guy? Right. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this guy that asked that question said this profound thing to the other guy in the group that was right on to the point where the guy started crying. And after we got done, we all looked at him and we're like, dude, you hear from God. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you, know? you hear from God? Yeah. Right. You know, but it was just so funny because prior that he asked, you know, that's kind of how the group started was that question. But reality, and then throughout the whole weekend, he spoke something into my life. He spoke something in the other leader's life, and we're like, <laughs> "Yeah, you're here, you know, dude." You know, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes we question whether we hear them, and and that's what once again this weekend just shows me that wherever you're at in your relationship with God, whether whether you've been doing this, you've been with Him a long time, or you're just getting started, man, He speaks, right? Right? <laughs> he speaks to us, and. Mm-hmm. um, the follow through of using that or 
is I think more important than the actual speaking, because I think there's so many things that God does tell us that we just don't do because we don't think it's of God. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we step back like, like Joe, right? Right. Okay. I'll talk to him at lunch. Right. You know, I'll talk to him at lunch. (laughs) Yeah. Which I mean, you know, we're friends. So, you know, you get, you get this and you go, oh yeah, I can, yeah, I'll share, I'll share that with him. (laughs) No, now. (laughs) Okay. Okay. We're going. Right. I mean, it's, it was, yeah, it was amazing. So, you know, just to kind of continue to walk through the weekend. So there, there, there are sessions, right? I mean, so there, there's, there's, there's content that we're working through, but the whole point of the weekend is not the content. And Pablo made that very, very pointed multiple times is that, Hey, we have some content, but this isn't really about the content. This is about healing and, and, and rescue and, Yep. Yep. And so, and so most of the weekend, and I think, you know, if I, if I'm going to say, if I was going to say, you know, what did I take away most from the weekend, um, in, in everything in totality, you know, if I could, which again, there's a ton of little things, like we talked about some of the littler things, but if I, if I said, what was the biggest thing that I took away from the weekend? It was that, you know, I've done I mean, I've I've done years of counseling and therapy and you know and and all these different things and I've learned a ton about myself and I've worked through a lot of stuff and so you know not that all of that was a waste because I don't believe it was um but the majority of those things that I've done have been looking for understanding right I I want to understand why I respond to people this way or I want to understand why you know in my my childhood, you know, that this, this comes up, or I want to understand why I relate to people in this way. It's this search for understanding. And this weekend was really a search for healing. It wasn't understanding. It was, it was restoration and it was healing. And, and there was a lot of understanding that came in that, but the focus of the weekend was, we're not going to give you a bunch of things to take home, at least for me. And again, the the best part I think about this weekend is somebody else could be sitting right next to me and go, no, that's not what I got out of the weekend because it was so dynamic. And, you know, and God was obviously was moving on people in the place that they were. But for me, again, it was like, we were seeking healing for those places in us that needed it. And, and it was there. Like I, we were watching guys get healed from I mean, the one guy was, you know, was going through, um, you know, alcohol withdrawals and, you know, and, and watching him get healed from, you know, um, from that grip on his life of, you know, of, of alcohol on his life. I mean, one, it takes some balls, um, yes, frankly to do that. And, and then to tell all of us, you know, he got up in front of everybody on Friday night and said, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through right in front of 70 guys. This dude stood up and just bared that. And you know, what happened is everyone didn't turn away from him or start to, you no. know, shy away. And no, in fact, in fact, in fact, that's what was so phenomenal about it is there's no judgment whatsoever. Right. What there was. Now there was more of us guys attracted to wanting to get to know him and wanting to be alongside of him. Yeah. And even just to like, is there anything I can do? You know I mean? What do you need? You know, let me help you with this. Let me, you know, it's, I mean, it was, there was so many, there was so many. um, And and again, it's like just one of another of a dozen stories, but that's really what it was is it was seeking healing. And, and, and again, there was a lot of good, you know, things that you took out of it. I mean, the, you know, the Sunday session with Pablo and his wife was, I mean, life changing, you know, I mean, I, I talking to, um, you know, I was talking to you and and Tim on the way down the mountain, you know, if, if every marriage worked in that manner with each other, like there would never be another divorce. There would (laughs) be very rare. You, sure. Yeah, I mean, it, like it would, it would just if every marriage had that and operated in that, it like you can't help but succeed because of. And it was again just them giving an example of 
you know, here's how we're not perfect, frankly. You know, it was Pablo basically sitting up there and his wife just savaging him for something that he did a few weeks ago. You know, I mean, I, I mean, as the guy, I, I just putting myself in his shoes as the guy who's, you know, leading this thing and he's up there, you know, teaching per se. And then he brings his wife up and basically says, you know, can you give an example of a time where I was not a great husband to or person to you? And she's, yep. <laughs> She, she just let him have it. You know, and she it was, held on to it for three. She held on to it for three weeks. <laughs> three weeks. She didn't tell him that he did it because she knew he was going to ask him that. And uh, I mean, you know, and again, it, it it just it just showed how real it was. I mean, in watching yeah. watching the two of them, and again, just to set the stage, it was Pablo, the guy that was kind of leading, you know, the face of this retreat, and then his wife up on stage on chairs facing each other. And he says to her, you know, you have an example of something that I've done that was not operating out of, you know, me being a good husband and a good person and all that stuff. And she says, yep. And she starts to tell this story. And like, he was just dying inside. You could see, oh, yeah. he, he, I mean, you know, the hurt that he was feeling in that moment. And he even said, you know, he said, I, there's a million things that jumped into my head to want to say, you know, I wanted to defend myself and, you know, or say, well, I don't remember having done that or whatever he said, but the reality is I could see myself having done that. I might not be able to remember having done it, but I could see how I do operate in that way at times. And that it's that I believe that if my bride is telling me that I did this, that I did. Right. And then they proceeded to work through that. And it was, I mean, it was, it was life changing. It was beautiful is a great word for it. It was beautiful. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's no way, there's no way that, that I, I can honestly say that there's absolutely no way that not every man was affected, whether they're married or not by that, by that act right in front of us, by that. Right. The way they communicate each other, the way they, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. It was, uh, it was on display. And, and like I say, it it takes a lot of vulnerability to actually ask your wife. In fact, that's quite one of the questions he said to ask your wife, you know, Mm -hmm. out of my false self, but when I'm out of my, when I'm not actually being the man I'm called to, what does that, how does that make you feel? What goes on inside of you? And that's a tough question to ask your your wife, you know, because Mm -hmm. guess what? He's going to be honest and you got to be ready for that. And, um, uh, so yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, yeah. So as, as a but, married guy, you know, for you, you know, what, what went through your head when you, when you watch that, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not married right now. So, um, you know, so as a, I mean, I, so I know what went through my head and it was, you know, regrets and, you know, and, and w- wishes of having done things differently. Right. But, you know, for you, like what, what were the things that when you watch that happen, like just, you know, is it what, what went through your head and thoughts? Well, that you had? to be truly honest with you, which is interesting. What's truly honest with you is, is what went through my head was, yeah, I understand. I get that. Cause Carrie and I have been on, we, you know, this last eight, since we moved to Oklahoma, we've had a lot of conversations like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, did it bring up, you know, oh gosh, you know, I need to ask her because I've never asked her that question that Pablo presented, you know, but we have had healing conversations like that over this last since, since we moved out here to Oklahoma that has just really strengthened my relationship with my wife and her relationship with me. So, you know, it doesn't happen too often, but for, for this time as I was watching it, I was feeling it obviously in my heart, mm-hmm. I was feeling the pain and what it caused her and all that kind of stuff. And yes, there were thoughts of, Oh my gosh, you know, what if I should do this better and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I was going, yeah, it reminded me of a conversation Carrie and I had three weeks ago along those same lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so that's what went on through my head. And I'm kind of thankful for that because if it was a year and a half ago, I probably would have been like, oh, I, you know, because it's just been recently that sure. I've been learning this stuff as a lifestyle. And so I'm actually putting it to practice with my wife and we're seeing incredible just God moving in our relationship like never before. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that's awesome. what it did for me. Uh, so, so what was I your most, that was, it was my me, most uh, impactful moment that of the weekend. So, you know, what, what was, what was yours? If you had to pull out one, you know, one and call it the most impactful thing that, 
that you saw or heard or were a part of for the weekend? Um, there, gosh, I think the two words that I get is intentionality and integration. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that being very intentional, that guy could speak to me at any moment about any guy in the room. That guy could speak to me about anything in my own life at any point in time. But being intentional about listening for that throughout the weekend. Um, and then the integration part of it for me is the fact of that, you know, to integrate Jesus into these situations of our life and into these situations and to integrate him into the weekend. And I, I guess the most, you know, the most impacting for me um, was when I was told to give that that hatchet away mm-hmm. to a guy that was in the military and seen some pretty tough stuff. Mm-hmm. And I I brought it, I brought one as a gift, but I didn't know who I was going to give it to. And so when all of a sudden, like I say, I could go from the moment I shook his hand, I felt I was part of his story. I can't explain it, but I just felt like I was part of his story without even knowing him. And then to once again, being intentional about, okay, God, is that you? And then finding out that it was, and then to integrate when he said, I want you to give him this hatchet with this, with these words in mind. Mm-hmm. And then doing that as a gift saying, here's this hatchet for you as a reminder of this, 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 and this. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden the guys that had him in that fire team were like, Mike, you have no idea. That's exactly that to me was to be used by God in that way. Mm-hmm. It, it rocks you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you get you you become very humble, and you. Mm-hmm. I, I can't explain it, but it was it was. Yeah, like I say, just the the reality that God could use anyone like that to the point of where it could be a hatchet you bought at freaking Ace Hardware. Mm-hmm. But yet it'll be something this man will remember for the rest of his life. I mean, mm-hmm. right, right. Uh, so for me, been doing ministry for a long time and speaking into men's life and stuff like that for a long time. But I, I, all I can tell you is there's something there's something characteristically different about the approach now. And um, and so that was that was impacting to me, and then at the same time. Um, one of the most powerful moments I think was was that was when him and his wife were up there too. I I just mm-hmm. I I was just blown away at at that twenty minutes that thirty minutes of their conversation was a year of counseling in in thirty minutes. Right know? for sure. So for sure. Yeah, it was amazing. It was so. amazing, and there were so many. I mean, just the guy, just the guys that I met there. You know, again. It was just, I mean, you, you met guys of such high character and in, in integrity, you know, I mean, it, it, I mean, and, and I think that if, if I said that to any of them, they would go, ah, you know, it's, I'm just, it's, right. but because that's just the kind of guys that they were, but really, I mean, I, every time I would meet somebody, I'm like, that's kind of, that's how I want to be when I grow up. And then I'd meet somebody right. else and I'm like, well, and I kind of want to be like this guy too. <laughs> but the, another yeah. guy to be like, well, wow, it's sort of this guy too. Right. It was, it was genuine. I, when right. they, when they came up and gave you a hug and they shook their hand, it was cause they, they care about you. They, right. they, they yeah. cared that you're there. They didn't, they didn't necessarily know you by name, but that you were another man in the room. They cared about that. And, mm-hmm. and it just, it, it just flowed out of them that, that they cared for every individual guy there. Um, whether it was just a handshake and a high and you never spoke to him again, the guys that are leading that team literally have, you know, one of the things that we prayed for in the intercessory prayer mm-hmm. was that there'd be an overflow of the love of the Father. Mm-hmm. That was one of the prayers, the consistent prayers, that we wanted every right. guy to experience the love of their dad. Mm-hmm. And it happened. Yeah, I would say mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah. So Yeah, that's awesome. It's, so we'll, we'll kind of so wrap good. here, I think. Oh, go ahead. It's so great. When it's an when it's an actual lifestyle, not an event, it's just right. right. It true. is. It it's the the 
the reality of it and the the depth of it were i mean you know again was was just it was beyond words i think in a lot of ways but um you know i think one of the things that they said over and over again was it's really hard to explain to people what muster is <laughs> And so, yes. you know, so th they kept saying it and these are the guys that are, they're, they're doing it, right? Like they come up with the concept and, and they put it into practice and they've done 10, you know, this was the 10th one. And they kept saying, it's really hard to explain to people what it is. And so right. we've attempted to do that in some sense over the last hour. Um, but I don't know that you can really, I agree with them. It's really hard to explain what it is. And, and so, um, you have to be invited to it. You can't go to a muster without being invited by somebody uh, that's been there. And so, um, and, and you have to apply to it, which is different than most, you know, our, our events, you, you know, you can find it on the internet and, and you can buy a ticket and you can show up and um, you know, and, and for now, at least that's the way we are. And um, you know, and, and we're good with that. This one, you have to submit an application. They pray over it and they try to bring the guys that they feel are who God wants at this event. And, um, and again, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that, um, you know, where, where it's, you're there very intentionally, like you said, but it's really hard to explain to people what it is. So you're willing to enter into an event like this in four days and a little bit of financial commitment and all that stuff with really having very little no, to know what, what the heck is going on. And so, um, right. you know, to me that, that sets the tone, I think, for the weekend um, because of the commitment that the guys have made that are going. But, you know, kind of like we've been talking about, it also just opens the door for things to happen and, and to be that aren't planned necessarily. It allows God to do what he wants to do that weekend. And so, um, so I hope we've done it justice in, in trying yeah. to explain, but I, but I feel like it is hard. It is hard after having, after having done this. It's very hard. And for those of you guys that are watching, you know, if you've been to a basic or you've been to a becoming a king, um, this would definitely be a step that I'd encourage you into. Uh, you know, uh, it's just it's just a, another additional way of re reclaiming your masculine soul. It's another di uh, way of God just, you know, interceding in your life. And and um, and like I say, it's it's. Any chance that there's an there's a, there's an area of, uh, or an arena that we can bring get men into that will bring focus to their hearts and cause them to be men after God's own hearts, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we don't know when the next muster is, but they said if they're going to do another one, <laughs> you know they'll they'll come up with the date. Uh, that's how they do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you know, as soon as we know, we'll let it. We'll let other guys know and and. Uh, uh, Invite. So they said, yeah, they said, um, you know, if they do another one, it'll be sometime in the fall, right? So, so, uh, you know, October time frame is kind of what we're, what we got out of that. And so, yeah, if they do another one, it'll be sometime in October, um, or, or in the fall for those of you that, that are, that are listening here or watching here and you want to know more wildsons.com is the website. I'll link it in all of the show notes for everything. Um, but go there. Muster is the name of this event, but they also have a great newsletter that Pablo writes. He said every week ish, right? He's like, I try to get it every week, but maybe not just kind of like our podcast. Um, but there's a great newsletter that he writes. If you want more information there, um, you can also, um, just kind of keep an eye on the stuff that's and go back to their website. They have a podcast as well that is linked on their website. So you can see that. Um, and, and listen to that, which is, which is newer. So they don't have as many, uh, episodes as we have. In fact, no, I'm just kidding. it's, uh, it's really good <laughs> stuff. And, and, um, maybe we can get one of them to come on here and, uh, and join us. I'm sure we could get somebody from that group to join us. It'd be pretty cool oh, yeah. to do a follow up with cool. that. But, um, but yeah, so you can go to their website, you can check it out. Obviously we'll give more information and we'll link to it on our, on our man demand.org website. Um, as well, when we have more information, we do know that we're doing a becoming a king at the end of September, right. man to man is, is helping to host a becoming a king at the end of September. So tickets are not for sale yet, but we will have those in the next uh, month or two. I'd say that we'll have tickets for sale where, uh, you can go four days. If you've been to a basic, you, uh, you'd be invited to come to becoming a king, which is which is kind of basic is the prerequisite. If you haven't been to a basic, you can go out to wild at heart.com um, and you can check out the 
basics near you and uh, and go to that. No matter where you are yeah. in the world, they have basics all over the world that they're running um, or that are being run by by men. So check that out. Becoming a King in September. Muster maybe this fall, uh, hopefully this fall, because I think there's plenty of people that I want to invite and uh, and send out yeah. there. But um, yeah, I think that's a good little summary. Anything that you want to wrap up with? No, I just want to, you know, uh, don't really, nothing really to wrap up with just the fact of that, you know, that becoming a king is kind of that next step. I mean, if you've got some in Minnesota, anyways, I know I keep saying I'm in Minnesota, but in Minnesota, um, you know, I think we're going to have four, you know, we're going to have had four basics up to the point of our becoming a king. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, if you've never been to a becoming a king, it's like another step in the journey, just like we keep talking about. Um, really, Morgan's about giving a decade of your life. Mm -hmm. um to you know discovering who you are and and um and you know he always says you know we're always becoming we never arrive and so mm -hmm. it's just just as powerful just as fantastic as the basics or even uh the musters but but outside of that you know man to man we're just trying to do the best we can to show you guys keep talking man keep getting together don't do this life alone you know, have conversations with other men. We got a campfire coming up, and well, this won't. No, that's this week. So you probably today. Yeah, so, oh yeah, we won't. This won't be out today. <laughs> this won't up be up today. But anyways, look for fires because those are starting yeah. to pop up all over the place too. It's another way to get together with men. So, right. Yep. And again, wildatheart.com slash fires, or it's actually, I think it's wildatheart.org. Now that I just said dot com twice, I might have to. Uh, I just check that. It's wildatheart.org. Um, slash fires is the way to go there while at heart.org slash basic was the the basic that we talked about earlier um so yeah so that's those fires are up and running around too yeah and if there's any if there's any of you guys out there that are looking for a coach looking for a mentor looking for a disciple uh discipleship i'm always available you can get a hold of me through uh the email here email at, at you know for man to man but i know i'm in oklahoma but uh, I do a lot of this on Zoom with with many men. So I just want mm -hmm. you to know that if you're out there and you need some of that assistance, just get a hold of me and we'll get make sure to make that happen. So, right. All right. All right. I'll wrap.